Hi right, folks, it's AJ, the hunting gear guy. And this is the ISSC Scout SR. It's a 22LR mag fed bolt action, toggle bolt action, which is kind of interesting. So as you can see there, the uh, the bolt toggles from the side and it's a uh, it's very fast action. So you can reload with it very quickly without moving your head or anything like that. No bolt's gonna come out at your face. And uh, it's very quick to, uh, to shoot. I got this because it was on a smoking deal. Uh, that's really the only reason. Uh, I have had one of the, I think the SPAs before. I'll link the uh, video over here. Um, and with that one, like uh, right out of the box, it had some reliability issues that got better after time. Um, let's see. So we got a 10 round mag. Of course, my chamber's empty, so we're clear to look at this thing a little bit closer. Starting at the back, we have this uh, hard plastic butt pad here. Uh, we do have some sh a couple of shims in here that we can pull out if we want to. Uh, and what that'll do is let us change the length of pull, which is kind of neat. We have a steel sling stud at the bottom. I like seeing those. I hate seeing the plastic ones. They just, I don't really like them. Uh, moving up towards the front, uh, we've got that large toggle on the side. You can see kind of how that fits. Uh, now, it does pinch a little bit at the back. The previous one came out straight here and didn't angle to the back at all. This is easier to grab because you don't need to reach uh, a little bit further forward, but it does create a little bit of a pinch point right here as it gets closer to the receiver. Um, it's not that big of a deal. You just get used to it and then it's, it's fine. Uh, the safety, I don't really like it. Uh, it's, it's right here and uh, that's on safe. That's off safe. That's off safe. Uh, oh, you, do, you have to lift that little red dot there. That little red dot. And that's the only thing that lets you know if you're on or off safe, other than like knowing uh, that forward is uh, is ready to fire. So I don't, I don't like that at all. Uh, the magazine is kind of like your standard, um, uh, like, PRS style rifle mag release at the back there. You push at the back and then pull it up. This one is so stupid tight. You might need some like additional filing at the back there because like it should be tight in there. Uh, one of the things, these things are quite sensitive to the, the feeding. If the feed bullet is a little bit low, it'll like ram them straight into like the bottom part of the, uh, of the chamber rather than into the chamber. Um, so your magazine, you want it to be tight, but this one, this one's just silly, uh, how tight it is. Now, one interesting thing, along the top here, we actually have a 3 8 dovetail, so you can mount a scope on the metal, which you probably want it to. Yes, you can mount it on the plastic here. Um, you probably want to mount, mount it on the uh, on the metal, unless you want to run, like, really run the scout rifle concept on a 22 LR for some for sake, godforsaken reason. Uh, the barrel itself is actually really nicely free-floated, so it sits right in the middle of the, that channel there. Um, we've got a threaded muzzle, so if you want to, you can throw on... I'm in Canada here, so a brake or a flash hider or something stupid instead of... If you're in a more freedom-loving country, or if you're in Europe or something like that, suppressor, suppressor for sure. Um, all along the, the top of the end here, we've got this Picatinny rail. Uh, it's plastic, so I wouldn't rely on this to do much in terms of like holding your scope because again, it's plastic um, and uh, or holding zero and that kind of thing. Now the trigger is adjustable, but they say in the user's manual we adjusted it. Don't adjust it, otherwise something bad might happen. So maybe people can adjust it too low or something like that. That's a possibility, I guess. Now let's talk about uh, a weird thing on this gun, and that's the trigger pull. So you see that my chamber is empty. I'm just gonna dry fire this for you, for you a couple of different times. Um, I'm just gonna describe it as I'm pulling the trigger as well. So I'm pulling, it's very light. I've got a light first stage there. Oh, and then it just went off. I, I could not feel the sear at all. Uh, it was indistinguishable from the background weight of the trigger. Again, pressing down, oh, just went off. I got quite a bit of over travel there. Um, but if I was just like adding weight to this thing, I don't think I would even use that over travel. Like, I don't think that would become come into play. So um, it's a really weird trigger. Um, the only other gun that I've shot that's been kind of close to this has been the Type 97. In terms of that pulling, 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 oh, it just went off. And not being able to feel, feel the sear at all uh, is on this gun as well as the Type 97. Now. If you have a flinching problem, fantastic. 
because it's very hard to flinch when you don't know where the sear is. <laughs> you just keep pulling and, oh, it just goes off kind of a thing, right? Um, but if you want like the, the repeatability of knowing where it is, um, that can be a little bit frustrating. And while we're on the topic of frustrating, jams in these things um, are more frequent than on other guns. We'll, so we'll put it that way. I would say a, a most decent semi-autos will be more reliable than this gun, which is unfortunate because it is a manually actuated gun. It's got a really cool uh, mechanism and everything, but uh, for some reason, the feeding angle can be weird sometimes, so you can get misfeeds a little bit low, and every odd time you'll get a fail to eject as well. So there's a couple different failure options that you can get with this thing um, that do hurt the reliability. But enough talk. Um, I'm not going to strip the rifle down in this video because then it would get demonetized. I'm going to put it in a different video. I'm going to link it in a card or something up here. So should you get one of these or who should get one of these? Well, I got a fantastic price on it. That's the only reason I got it again. Um, I think for the price that these things were selling at, full retail was right around 650 to 700. God, no, God, no, purely for the reliability. If this, was, if this thing was reliable, uh, there would be an interesting use case in the fact that it's a toggle bolt. So if I was shooting a competition that um, didn't allow semi-autos or manuals were in a different, uh, a different division, um, this might have a, a, a good use case because it is very fast to shoot. You can, if you want to do like the, the middle finger uh, Enfield thing, it's uh, very quick to, uh, to just rip on it and, uh, and get a lot of rounds out. Um, that's very interesting. If you want to shoot biathlon and you're poor, uh, well, it's kind of like the biathlon action. It's not at all like a biathlon rifle in terms of accuracy or reliability, uh, but it's very cheap. And, uh, it, at least if you get it on sale. So I guess there's that to say about it. Um, but yeah, reliability, not great. I think for the price I paid, yeah, why not? Uh, uh, I already have a bunch of other more reliable duty 22s that I could use for like small game or competition or something like that. So this can be like a, a fun farting around rifle. Um, at the price, I'm okay with that. Um, if I had to pay more, I don't think I would have been okay with that. But I think for the price I paid, I think it's fine. Anyways, thanks for watching.